in order to remove the stench from these oils. These oils would stink badly because they're so oxidized, the equivalent of decaying fish. Um, so when you have the, and the reason that they do, and, and I need to go back to the your earlier question too, is what makes these different? Well, the, the omega-6 fat is really high in vegetable oils and it is naturally very low in all natural food, all natural food. The omega-6 is really low, um, but it runs, you know, it tends to run from 20 to 80 percent uh, in vegetable oils. And those those omega-6 fats, they're the ones that um, they um, tend to oxidize. And when they oxidize, they would stink, just like the omega-3 fats and omega-6 in fish when they oxidize, which is basically this, you know, part of the decaying process, they stink. And so if it weren't, if it weren't for the deodorization step, which was perfected way back around 1900, um, we nobody would be eating vegetable oils because they would stink and they would make your, they'd make your food stink and taste awful. But that step allows them to get them into the food supply and they're virtually odorless and tasteless. It, it makes it hard to understand how we can even call these things food, you know, because they've been so, I mean, I think it's, you know, uh, uh, not, but but thinking about oxidation, right. if if you could talk specifically just for a minute about, you know, the diet high, heart hypothesis and the oxidized LDL cholesterol and the connection, uh, you know, with, with the seed oils and why, you know, we really are maybe eliminating the wrong fats here. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so to, to do this in one minute, I'll try. The but here's what I found, first of all, minutes. is <laughs> well, we'll make it very quick and then we can dig back into whatever you want, Bonnie. So um but let me get the okay. we'll get the high level view out of the way. And and that's what I prefer, and everybody else probably prefers anyway. Um so think of it this way, first of all, everyone, is that um there's been all kinds of populations that have incredibly high saturated fat consumption like the uh, Maasai warriors of Kenya and Tanzania that consumed 40 to 46% of their diet as saturated fat, yet had virtually no heart disease. Um, the Tokelauans of the South Pacific in the 1960s, their diet was 50% saturated fat coming from coconut oil, yet they had no heart disease. Um, 19th century Americans consumed on average about um, 225 pounds of, of uh, meat per year yet had no heart disease. They were consuming uh, on average, probably around 10 to 12 ounces, the adults anyway, 10 to 12 ounces of uh, meat, um, that's all meat per uh, per day. That could be, when I say meat, I also mean, I mean, uh, most of that would be beef and pork, some chicken and some fish. So, so the bulk of it was pork and, or beef and pork. But anyway, they had no heart disease. Um, and so what so what we see is we see this um, precise parallel between the increase in vegetable oils and the increase in heart disease. And like the saturated fat was flat through the ent entire 20th century while coronary heart disease was going through the roof. So it made out if 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 you could have taken our published data and looked at it back in 1960, no one probably would have ever even begun to point the finger at saturated fat as a cause of heart disease. So so it in and if if you look at every single population that has heart disease, they're all consuming vegetable oils. And if you look at all of the populations, like the all the hunter gatherers, the subsistence agriculturists, the um, horticulturists, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 tribes essentially that don't have heart disease all around the world, none of them have vegetable oils, right? Where would they get vegetable oils? They're, because vegetable oils are a product of the industrial revolution. And so that tells you a lot right there. Um, what I think is happening at the molecular level is that um, 
It is not just LDL cholesterol that drives heart disease. Very simply, it is oxidized LDL cholesterol. That is the only thing that can be taken up into the vascular wall and begin and propagate that atherosclerotic plaque, which ultimately results in the heart attack when um, under certain circumstances. But but um, what drives the oxidized LDL? Well, it is ultimately high omega-6 or vegetable oils because the omega-6 linoleic acid is incorporated into the LDL cholesterol molecule and uh, it goes rancid. It rapidly oxidizes. And when it oxidizes, your um, body wants to re quickly remove that dangerous product from the blood. And so it does. And in the process, it forms an atherosclerotic plaque. And as those progress, they ultimately, if they ultimately can rupture, and that's where they, and then a clot forms there, and that's how you develop a heart attack or potentially a certain type of stroke, or you could, you know, you could, you know, close off blood supply to um, part of your leg or something like that, for example. So it's very, very simply, I don't think, I, in my belief, system. Uh, I, I don't think it's possible to develop uh, coronary heart disease without high omega-6 diet, which means um, uh, vegetable oils or possibly large amounts of um, animals, uh, monogastric animals that get high omega-6 like corn and soy fed chicken and pork, and then also possibly large amounts of nuts and seeds because nuts and seeds are very high in omega-6 so i don't we're not meant to be eating those as staples so that was all more than a minute but that's the big overview right there so so getting an egg white omelet cooked in of you know seed oil back in the kitchen is probably not the best idea because they're yeah, still on the, the menu and and they yeah get the, if you want to make yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, you, I mean, have an omelet with all, you know, with all the eggs you want, if they're ancestrally raised, which means the chickens are not being fed corn and soy, that makes their omega-6 low, and cook the eggs in butter. So I cook everything in butter, you know, we cook everything in butter. Um, if you need a lot of oil, I would suggest using coconut oil because it's 2% omega-6 linoleic acid. Um, but all the other oil, I mean, just to, if you want to keep it really simple, I would avoid, I would avoid um, edible oils in general. Well, I, I am on, on, on board with that, but you know, the, obviously there's been a big switch in pushing people to these seed oils to lower the LDL cholesterol. But of course I know it's been correlated with overall, you know, higher mortality risk as well. Right. And, and I, I say something that's uh, that's it's factual and rather humorous all at the same time. I, I, I often introduce this at the beginning of my presentations that the the uh, the major uh, the most prestigious nutrition institutions in the world, Harvard School of Public Health, Tufts University Nutrition Department, Mayo Clinic's Nutrition Department, Cleveland Clinic, the American Heart Association, on and on, they all tell us to consume the so-called heart healthy vegetable oils. And why do yeah. they tell us to consume these? And the answer is one single reason. That is that they lower our cholesterol. And, and then I say, and guess what? So does arsenic. And this is absolutely true. Arsenic lowers your cholesterol. Arsenic does the very, you know, the, uh, the very same things to us pathophysiologically that 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 vegetable oil that the seed oils do uh, because they both work through similar mechanisms they both their primary mechanism of action that's dangerous is oxidation and by the way bonnie i'll just say to to your audience that there's four major pillars of danger through high omega-6 diets and vegetable oils 